In this lecture, we'll talk about the null space of a matrix. We've talked about subspaces, and given a matrix A, there's two important subspaces that are associated with A. And in this lecture, we're going to talk about the first one, which is called the null space. Here's the definition. So if we have an M by N matrix, then the null space of A, which we write NUL of A, is the set of all vectors in Rn such that Ax equals 0. So notice that the number of columns of the matrix is going to be the same as the number of entries of the vector x, and that's so that this product Ax is defined. Another way to think about this is that if you have capital T, which is some linear transformation from Rn to Rm, and its associated matrix is A, then the null space of A is just the set of all vectors that when we plug into this function, we get 0, because plugging into T of x, that just gives us Ax. It's just another way to think about it. So let's look at an example real quick. So if I give you this matrix A and a vector U, how can we check to see if this vector U really is in the null space of A? Well, remember, the null space of A is defined by the property that A times X equals 0. So this is vectors in Rn such that A times X equals 0. So this property here, A X equals 0, that's the defining property of this set. That's how we check to see if something's in that set. We multiply the matrix A by that vector and see whether or not we get 0. If we do get 0 when we multiply, then that vector is in the null space, and if we don't get 0, then it's not in the null space. So that's all we've got to do. We've just got to multiply A times U, which in this case is going to give us 1, negative 5, negative 3, 9, negative 2, 1, multiply by 5, 3, negative 2, and see whether or not we get the 0 vector. So, going across the first row, we've got 1 times 5, negative 3 times 3, and negative 2 times negative 2. That's 5 minus 9 plus 4, that's 0. And in the second row, negative 5 times 5, 9 times 3, 1 times negative 2, that's negative 25, plus 27, minus 2, that's also 0. So since we got the 0 vector, that means that the answer to this question is yes. Now, we've been calling this the null space, but we haven't actually proved that it's really a subspace of Rn. So remembering what we talked about before, there's four things that we have to prove to prove that a subset is a subspace. So first of all, we've got to actually prove that it is a subset. We've got to prove that it contains the zero vector. And then we've got to prove that it's closed under vector addition and scalar multiplication. So let's work through this. First of all, why is null space of A a subset of Rn? Well, that's how it's defined. It's defined to be those vectors in Rn that have the property that A times that vector equals 0. So clearly it's a subset. Why does it contain the 0 vector? Well, if we multiply the matrix A by that 0 vector, we do get the 0 vector. And so this 0 vector satisfies that defining property, which means it's in the null space. Why is this set closed under vector addition? Well, we have to prove that if we had two vectors in the null space, then the sum of those two vectors is in the null space. So this is an if-then statement. The hypothesis is u and v are elements of the null space. And the conclusion is that u plus v is in the null space. So we start with the hypothesis. We say, all right, well, let's suppose we had two vectors in the null space. What does that tell me about those two vectors? Well, by the definition, we would know that a times u is 0 and a times v is 0. And now our goal is to prove the conclusion. Our goal is to show that a times this new vector, u plus v, is also the zero vector. So we start with that calculation, and we're hoping that this works out to be the zero vector. Well, we have a distributivity, so we get au plus av. We know that au is zero, and we know that av is zero. So that gives us zero plus zero, which does in fact work out to be zero, just like we wanted. Similarly, to show that the null space of A is closed under scalar multiplication, again we have an if-then statement. We say, if you had a vector in the null space and a scalar, then when you multiply the scalar by that vector, you also end back up in the null space. So again, we have our hypothesis, and we have our conclusion, and we're trying to show that if the hypothesis is true, then the conclusion is true. So we start with the hypothesis. We say, all right, suppose you did have a vector in the null space and a scalar. Well, what does it tell us to know that the vector is in the null space? Well, it tells us that a times that vector is the zero vector. 
and we're hoping that a times this new vector, cu, is also zero. So we start with that. We start with a times cu, and we're hoping this works out to be zero. We can rearrange the scalar out front using our algebraic properties. We know that au is zero, and any scalar times the zero vector is going to end up being the zero vector. So this proves, with all four of these steps done, this proves that the null space of A really is a subspace of Rn. Now one of the problems with the way the null space is defined is that it's defined implicitly. In other words, it's defined in terms of a property that the elements have to satisfy. This makes it easy to check that a particular vector is in the null space, like we did in the previous example. All we have to do is multiply the vector by A and see whether or not we get zero but it makes it difficult to generate specific elements of the null space of A. Other than the zero vector, which is automatically in the null space, like we checked just a minute ago, any other vectors in the null space, how would we find them? For example, what if we had a matrix like this? This matrix is three by five, and so I know that the null space of A is a subspace of R5. But how could I describe the elements of the null space? Or can I get specific examples of elements of the null space of A? Well, what I'm looking for are vectors x in R5 that have the property that when I take A and multiply it by that vector, I get zero. So if that's what I want, then what I should do is solve that matrix equation. If I if I can solve ax equals zero and get specific examples of solutions to that equation, then that will give me specific examples of elements of the null space of A. So we solve that matrix equation like we've been doing for a while now. We set up the augmented matrix, and then we row reduce it. Once we have our row reduced matrix, we set up our solutions as equations. This gives us x1 minus 2x2 minus x4 plus 3x5 equals zero and x3 plus 2x4 minus 2x5 equals 0. Solving those equations for the basic variables, we see we have three free variables, x2, x4, and x5, and then x1 equals 2x2 plus x4 minus 3x5, and x3 equals negative 2x4 plus 2x5. As we've done before, we're going to break that up into separate vectors, and what we see here are three vectors that generate the null space. The null space is the span of those three vectors. So maybe if I call this vector u, and call this vector v, and call this vector w, what this would tell me is that for this specific matrix A, the null space of A is the span of u, v, and w. And now that I have these spanning vectors, I can generate as many elements of the null space of A as I would want. I just make any particular linear combination that I would want using a value of x2, x4, and x5, and, and that would give me different elements of the null space of A. So to sum up, when we want to look for a spanning set for the null space of A, in other words, a set of vectors that span the null space of A, we want to solve that matrix equation Ax equals zero. And the spanning set that we're looking for is going to contain one vector for each free variable that we get when solving that equation. Now, if we don't have any free variables, in other words, if the matrix A has a pivot in every column, then that means that the only vector in the null space of A is the vector 0. In other words, Ax equals 0 has only the trivial solution. And that's going to happen if and only if the null space of A is only the zero vector. That there would be only be that one vector in there because, again, the null space of A is the solution set to the equation Ax equals zero.